So hi again and welcome here in my kitchen. Now, just to know each other a little bit, I'm Francesco and I told you like three days ago that I run the class of family cooking here in Florence. So what I do normally in my life, I did my job for about 24 years in a kitchen. I'm 40 now and um, I'm not still cooking in restaurants or something else, but I'm teaching for about 10 years. I do this beautiful job, yes, for 10 years. And I teach as well professional classes and everything, but I enjoy as well a lot with all you people that normally choose Italy for vacation, and especially Florence, okay? What we do normally as well in a class is let enjoy, for example, all the adults in the classes, absolutely, but um, as well the kids. So for this reason, family cooking classes, and uh, the, kids, the kids enjoy it very, very much. So. Mm, but today we try to enjoy together and stay together while you know that um, now the big problem is just a uh, small virus, okay? So we try to stay together and enjoy this time together and do something of healthy, why not healthy, and uh, as well very, very good for dinner or for lunch, okay? Uh, what we do today is fresh pasta. For first thing, we have to do a fresh dough, for example, and uh, we have as well to do uh, the stuffing for it. What we have, we do a ravioli. It's called normally potato tortelli. Okay, potato tortelli. It's very typical from northern Tuscany to Emilia Romagna. I don't know if you heard about Emilia Romagna or, for example, balsamic vinegar. No, balsamic vinegar is, for example, from Modena and all this place. So. Mm, this is a little bit too northern, but for us, okay? It is really, really close to the beginning of Emilia Romagna and the end of Tuscany. Now, Tuscany is the whole region, Florence is the only town, we can call it town, and a little bit outside of Florence we find this ravioli. Now, ravioli that are served normally with a very, very um, fat, Mitos of sausage of pork meat that we do normally is um, Siena, Cinta Sinese is the name of the pig. So it's a black pig with a white strip in the middle and it's very, very fat, okay? But very, very tasty. So with this one we do the sauce normally and we can garnish the potatoes as well. I'm already hungry, sorry. And we can garnish as well a little bit with this fat oil, the potatoes that we need. Now, potatoes. I did already for the recipe we need to cook before the potatoes 30 minutes baked in the oven on 355 okay very very important so we can cool them down and we can mash them while the stuffing absolutely doesn't have to be um, warm so really cold okay not in the fridge just outside of the fridge then um, we have to mash those and everything and we add all the ingredients that I have to tell you the pasta dough is the first thing that we will do. So remember we do as well the cooking class. Why um, I teach you as well how to get precise your timing. Okay, so timing pasta dough before. Leave it in one side, not in the fridge. We don't need it. Just leave it in one side. How we do the pasta dough? We do the pasta dough with egg this time. Okay, but the pasta dough you can do it as well. Vegetarian, vegan. So only flour and water or flour and wine, flour and juice. You can do it with everything you want as well. Blended spinach to make it green, tomato paste to make it red, okay? Remember just another trick that if you wanna have a beautiful color for the pasta, a green color, a red color, a yellow color like saffron, for example, you need always, always a drop of lemon juice so you can preserve the colors and you don't bring it in ox oxidation, okay? So you don't oxidize it. Now, we serve it, the ravioli, okay? We serve it with a fresh tomato sauce, okay? Now, for now, we have the fresh tomatoes, 
okay but you can use if you don't have it you if you don't get it fresh you can use as well canned tomatoes so take the canned tomatoes the Roma tomatoes summer zani how do you call it you can take it out from the sauce and then after it, mash it a little bit by hand or chop it finally by knife and use it like the fresh ones okay now the fresh ones for example we have at the end a job like um, canned tomatoes while well, we have to score them out uh, cut it a little bit on top and then boil it in a pot okay for about one minute we blanch those and after so we can peel them very quickly and they look like canned tomatoes but the canned tomatoes are a little bit more cooked okay so softer and we need just two three minutes of cooking time no more in this case today we use as well fresh garlic you don't have the fresh garlic you can use the dry one the chopped one the grounded one that's fine as well the powder one it's okay don't exaggerate with the powder one but i know you like it it's okay and uh, fresh basil Okay, we have fresh basil, okay? You don't have it, use oregano. Oregano, that's fine. Or if you have like the frozen leaves of basil or mm, as well a little bit of parsley, it's fine. Another taste, I know, but you can use as well parsley if you don't have it. And oregano is a, is the best uh, substitute for it, okay? Now, in the potatoes as well, uh, it's a little bit rich, okay, the stuffing. So we have to put inside a little bit of rounded parmesan cheese, for example. Um, we have to infuse in very hot extra virgin olive oil, the garlic chopped fine with the rosemary, very fresh rosemary. If you don't have the fresh rosemary, you can use as well the dry one. It's the same thing. Don't worry about this. But before, 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 before we start, the first thing please is wash your hands continually on everything you touch, okay, before, and this is something that you have to respect right now, up now. Wash always your hands, don't cross everything, okay, so very important, just leave in one side the crossing contamination, why as well the sanitary doesn't have the time to look about you, I think, right now for just crossing contamination, okay? So please, uh, wash your hands continually. Uh, you touch the potatoes, you wash it. You touch the other things, you wash it every time. And this is something, this is a right that you have to respect if you are in a kitchen, for your family or not, okay? Now, So, for first thing, we take the scale, okay? For the first thing, we take the scale, and in here, we have to get immediately, this is my grandma's table, sorry, we have to get in here immediately 200 grams of flour, okay? In a recipe that you get, it's 100 grams. With a medium egg, it's 150, so one medium egg is about 50 grams, okay? And uh, 200 is for two people, if you like very good big portions, that's fine. So 200 grams, how many spoons? For 200 grams is about 8, 10 spoons, tablespoons of flour, okay? Now... If we want a little bit of rough taste for the pasta, in this case I'm using the double all flour, that's all-purpose flour, okay, for you? So the all-purpose flour, it's a very nice, uh, fine flour that you use for everything, okay? And uh, in Italy, normally, normally, we use as well the yellow one. The yellow is a durum wheat flour, very nice and rough. So we can stick the sauce on it, okay? We can do just uh, the 20% on it, okay? So 180, 160 grams, okay? 160 and 40 grams of durum wheat hmm? in here. So first thing, we don't need the scale anymore. We mix the two kinds of flour together, okay? 
any question, if you have question of something, you can tell us me directly on Facebook. Write me down or if you are okay, just emoji, okay? So, over here, I mix up two kinds of flour and we break inside directly two eggs. Remember, the eggs not really out of the fridge, okay? Let it out in room temperature is much better to fold it in. And we break the egg in here before so we are sure that we don't have shells inside so no crunchy stuff please and one and two eggs okay whole eggs whole eggs man and we mix everything in so now how you can see it i mix perfectly everything in Okay, slowly, slowly, with a fork, with a spoon, that's fine. We are here to enjoy, nothing too very, very, very professional. So, I am professional, sorry, but um, I want to enjoy too, you know, all this stuff make, make, me, make me sick. That's not very nice. Okay, after this, we have this very lumpy, lumpy, lumpy dough, okay? If you see it too dry, don't do like all moms do, okay? It's dry, we need a dry. Don't add water, don't think that you can do it, okay? The pasta dough has to be very hard or after it will be a mess, huh? So listen to me while I know, okay? So everything in here, I love the smell of a flower, it's beautiful. And how you can see, we need it perfectly all on the table and we stick it together. So push the flour in here and stick it together. Push the flour in here and stick it together. Continue like this, like dancing, you know? Push and fold, push and fold. The same thing. And push and fold. Like break dough. I don't know if you did it sometime, break dough. It's like the same thing. Lots of people tell me normally, um, he has two rice. No, <laughs> we don't have any yeast in the pasta dough, so we don't have to rice it. it. We have just to leave it in one side. Mamma mia, this dough is so hard. All right. We just leave it in one side and we let it relax. We say relax normally in Italy. Why? If you need it and over need it a little bit, that you can, you can like knead it a lot. More you work the pasta dough and better is this after. Eh? More elasticity, more gluten texture, so more al dente, okay? So, we have to leave it after, but in a plastic film, and we let it moist a little bit, okay? So you can see, if I push on it, it's very nice elastic, and the pasta dough pumps back, okay? That means it's perfect, huh? Absolutely, I did it. Mm? So it has to be perfect. And uh, what we do here, mamma mia, okay. We take the plastic film and take it in it. Okay, we do it in it and we let it relax a little bit so we let it moist. So after it will be very nice and soft. Okay, so I'll leave it just in one side. Wash my hands. So, <clears throat> I clean a little bit the table, but it is a mess a little bit, and uh, another very important thing to say is that we can do, for example, a gluten-free pasta, okay? 
it's a little bit complicated how to mix, for example, the uh, flowers while we don't know really the proportions, okay, of it. But we know one thing, in the already prepared flour mixture is um, the natural gum, okay, so like stabilizer or caro flour, they stick a little bit together everything, it's like a jelly, huh? uh, vegan jelly, absolutely, but it's like a jelly, so, and we need all this product to use this products and use it very well or it will come out a mess, okay, it's, it doesn't have like the real, real same um, quality of product, so only short pasta will be perfect, uh, long pasta is a little bit more difficult, you, you have to study on it a lot, okay? The very important thing is that's very easy, for example, to do gnocchi, potato gnocchi, okay? With what we do today, the stuffing, for example, of those potatoes, uh, we mash it and everything. The leftover, normally, we add a little bit of flour, one egg dough in one kilogram, just one egg uh, yolk, sorry, and we mix everything together and we roll it down like cigars and cut all the gnocchi off. Okay, we don't roll it on the fork. The gnocchi rolled on the fork are made just with semolina flour and water. Gnocchetti, okay? Not uh, gnocchi. Eh? Gnocchi. Eh? Okay, now, baked potatoes. Do you remember? 30 minutes in the oven, medium size of potato, 355 Fahrenheit. 180, okay, Celsius, not more, or they get too mushy, okay? Now, another very nice thing that we need, I'm very organized, sorry. So, another very nice thing is the potato ricer, okay? The Germans, they was perfect to have this. This, are, this is a machine to do spätzle. I know that a lot of you guys, as well in the States, know the spätzle machine, okay? With a very mushy dough, then you squeeze it directly in the water and you have these noodles, okay? But if you don't have this, you can have as well the hand measure, if you want, or just squeeze them a little bit by hand and by fork. Not too mushy, remember. If you have pieces of potatoes inside, it's much better. Uh, and uh, here back the bowl, the cutting board, that's my knife, okay? <laughs> you can use any kind of knife you want. We cut all those potatoes in a half. Okay, very easy. Don't peel it. Don't get lost time, okay? We don't have all this time. We have lots of time while we are at home and we have to stay home, okay? But, glass of wine better. Huh? Right, look, we smash it down. Cut off here and uh, just take off the peel. Very easy. Okay? That's my garbage bowl. Ti chiederò senza di quello cosa puoi usare. So, what we use without this? Okay? Hence, how I told you before, then we use um, forks or just the hand measure. Okay? Very simple. The important thing we make it, we ground it, okay? It's not important. Don't blend it. Really, don't blend it or you do a puree and this is really bad, okay? Now, here. Again. So, I will do ravioli for a football team today. Well, I'm hungry too. I don't think you are the only one that have to eat today. <laughs> okay. And uh, take off the peel and continue it. So, potatoes. For example, we are using here, right now, the potatoes, the red skin potatoes, okay? Red skin potatoes are really nice and starchy and very tasteful, okay? Um, the white potatoes are, um, they have this sandy taste, you know, that's absolutely not nice, and they don't stick really together. So, 
I don't like them. Right? And uh, then offer, if you like it, you can use it. But absolutely doesn't have the same taste. Mamma mia, this is so hard. Okay, now, here. And off you go. And this one here, I have my potatoes, okay? In this potatoes now, you can see here, for example, I have a small pot. In this small pot, I'm doing just a tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil. A little bit, don't exaggerate with it. And uh, glove of garlic, two gloves of garlic, okay? Just a um, tiny bit, don't smash it all on the cutting boards, please. Just press them a little bit and put it like this with a peel. Why with a peel? We call it aglio in camicia, garlic with the shirt, okay? What I mean with garlic with the shirt? Um, with the cover, so with a peel. What do the peel? The peel doesn't let it brown, okay? So uh, save it from browning, and but it's, the oil is struck completely the essence of the garlic. So leave it like this. Don't peel it, don't mince it for now, nothing. Just leave it like that, okay? Then we need fresh or dry rosemary, that's fine. It's really nice as well, thyme. For example, majorana can be very nice too, a substitute I mean, okay? Mm, if you don't have it. If you have rosemary, use the rosemary. And uh, so you can like appreciate as well the real taste of the ravioli, that's amazing. And uh, yes, allora here I'm pour all the rosemary like this. We don't need to, for example, uh, chop it by knife, nothing, nothing, okay? I do it just like that, okay? And I pour it. I put it over here in medium high fire, in this case energy, okay? Now, we start just let it boil it a little bit, okay? Don't exaggerate or you will burn the essence of the rosemary, okay? And uh, we let it just, just start boiling. Then after we stop it, we take it out, okay? And we pour on the hot, on the heat, we pour the pot with the water. So we have hot water to cook as well the tomatoes after. Mm? It's starting to bubbling. And this time, just a pinch of parmigiano, okay? Small pinch, no more, like a pinch each. Eh? Then, a little bit of pepper. Tiny, 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 tiny. And, uh, Salt. He's bubbling, okay? Leave it like that and leave it in one side. A little bit more salt. Bang. And here we have a pinch of nutmeg. Mm? Like this. Mmm, it smells wonderful. Now, I'm getting hungry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. After this, um, the very important thing is you have to just think something, okay? You do the oil hot like this. You put inside the rosemary, just the rosemary, and you can preserve it in bottles and preserve it, preserve it like aromatized extra virgin olive oil. If you do it just with the garlic, you do it just with the garlic, and you can have all your bottles with a piece of rosemary, so you remember it's rosemary oil, wine glove of garlic, so you remember that's garlic, chili pepper, and etc. etc. Okay, and you can preserve it like that. Remember to pour something in, or you will forget everything. Okay, now here, for example, I have the oil. Hmm? I need a small one for. I have all the oil, and I pour in. 
just a tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil too. Okay. One spoon. And if you like, we can pour as well tomato paste to give it just a little bit of color, you know, just a tiny bit. Tiny. Mm? And we smash everything together. Now comes the good job. So we need to get homogeneous color, completely in orange color, okay? Don't let that you have like around pieces and big lumps of cheese or tomato paste. That's absolutely bad if you eat a whole piece of paste is bad. So Allora. Want to clean, sorry. Now, for those potato, what we do with this potato? Now, with this potato, if someone get right now on the video, we are doing Potato tortelli, tortelli di patate, okay? What are tortelli? Tortelli are ravioli, bigger than the normal size, okay? Sometimes as well in a beautiful, like, big head, capelletti shape, okay? But, like, tortelloni, eh? But in this case, we are doing ravioloni. Eh? <laughs> so, in Italy, raviolini, ravioli, or ravioloni, big things, okay? Now, how you can see the color is perfectly, okay, mix it together. This one away. Man, this one for now, we don't need it. And I do just on another board, okay, something that's not too flat so that the potato doesn't stick on it. We are doing all this. Bowls. Okay? Before you do it, remember, taste it. Okay? I know how much stuff I have to put in, so I don't care about the quantities and everything, okay? But taste it. But this is for you as well, a new recipe. You have to taste it. And remember that that stuff has to be very nice and tasteful. So a little bit more pepper, a little bit more salt how you saw a little bit more parmesan cheese but important thing that we can give taste from inside to the ravioli or your ravioli will be like uh, tasteless mm? like a dessert at the end so now remember that mm, the potato balls doesn't have to be too big Okay, not too big, not too small, or we do raviolini, eh? tortelli, piccolini. So, over here, all like that. One, two, three. So normally the quantity is about five, not more than six potato ravioli per each person. Pasta and potato. It's healthy, it's a Mediterranean kitchen, but if you eat too much, it's not anymore a Mediterranean diet. <laughs> and after, it's a little bit exaggerated. And Sundays, yes. It can be that we do like a four-course meal in Italy. Uh, appetizers with bruschetta, 
bruschetta, eh? no bruschetta, we do some pasta with meat sauce over lasagne, we can do a second course as well, like meat, baked chicken or something with potatoes and some dessert, like tiramisu and all that stuff, yes, I like it a lot, but we don't eat like this every day, okay, we have our plate, we have just our one dish, one plate of pasta with a little bit of salad, or <laughs> salad with a little bit of salmon, or some meat, scalopine, you know scalopine, I know that you know scalopine, but we don't eat that much normally, okay. I think it's okay. Mm? So, can leave it over here. Wash my hands. And, uh, I'll take a new knife. Hmm? So now, flip my cutting board. So now it's clean. And very important, I have to score out the tomatoes, okay? Especially at home, please, don't do it like that, okay? Or you kill yourself, you know? Or don't do it like in the direction of your hands. Just leave it on the cutting board. I know that you think I know how to do it, but it's not like that sometimes. <laughs> I don't know. Now, we have to put in the knife and turn it on the direction of the cutting board, not on my directions, okay? So, over here, just cut it out very easily. And one, two, don't cut it all through down. Okay, we need to cut only the peel on top, just the peel, across on top, and that's it. So the same thing I will do it with this other bay. One, two, and score it out, always on the direction of the cutting board. And one, two, and score it out. Very important for the sauce, we need to use very soft tomatoes. If they are a little bit harder, that means our tomatoes for caprese, bruschetta, or for salad. Okay? Tomatoes that are soft, as well, a little bit passed over, you know, that are very, very soft, sometimes as well broken, that's fine. Take off only the little bad thing and cook it. Hmm? So, I will boil those for just one minute only, okay? And this time, I will fill that bowl with cold water. So, we can cool down directly the heat of the tomato, so we stop the cooking and we don't burn absolutely the fingers, that's the most important thing. And in this pan right now, we have to pour a tiny bit, a tiny bit of extra virgin olive oil. Now, <laughs> a tiny bit normally in a kitchen means cover the bottom of a pot, okay? That's very, very, very important or you can burn as well your ingredients. That's absolutely bad. Mm? Now, over here. Sorry, but everything has to be very precise. So. 
The tomatoes are done. So I'm stopping right now the cooking time, okay? And what we do with this pan? With this pan right now, I have to put in a little bit of this water from the tomatoes, that's fine, okay? Or from the hot pot, that's fine too. We emulsify it a little bit, we mix it together a little bit, okay? Now, another thing is what? What are ingredients we need now? The most important one, okay? Garlic. Va bene? So, it's a little bit too big, but it's okay. Huh? So, how we peel the garlic normally? Someone can answer over there, it's okay. How do you peel it normally? How do you peel it? Like that. You smash it down, right? Pop it down? No. No. We don't do that. Sorry, in the kitchen. We need the whole garlic. If you smash it down, you squeeze everything everywhere. We don't need that. Okay? Now, we need the juice of the garlic. That's the only thing that we need. In Italy, and my, you will never see an Italian that it's the garlic like that. It's not a peel for us. Okay? Now, we have to... Cut it in the middle on this way, okay, on this way, and chop it down and open it. Now, how you can see, the inside of the garlic is perfectly white, okay, so we don't need to take off nothing. Like this, we can see if it's green or not, okay, and if it's green, we take it off. Hmm? So now, over here, I hold just the end of it, okay, and pop it out. That's all. Hold it and pop it out. Here's my clean garlic. Here's my clean cutting board. Mm -hmm. Now, we hold the knife here. And I don't do that. <laughs> we don't do that, okay? We have to hold it here. And just cut it fine, 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 fine. All in julienne, okay? This very, 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 very tiny julienne. Without fingernails, I recommend you. Okay. And then, chop it all fine, 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 in one way. Okay. Always slide the blade of a knife. It's very, very important that you slide it, so you don't smash nothing down. Put it in here. Yes, put it in. And, uh, how you can see, here's the garlic, okay, very, very fine minced. Then the other piece, I will take it out, mm? I will take it out and uh, I put it directly on the heat with the water, yes. Now, on medium high, okay, on medium heat, sorry, we can let it bubble a little bit, but thanks to the water, the garlic will never burn. We have it really nice and white, and just with one glove of garlic, we can do a lot of sauce. And look how easy it is to peel the blanched tomatoes, okay? So we don't waste nothing of it. Mamma mia, they are so squishy. I'm a chef, but I'm not picky too, huh? So, here, away. And one, two, three, here, and here. Just in big chunks. That's all. Okay. So the garlic is bubbling. And in this time, we can pour in the oregano or the dry basil or the fresh basil or the frozen one. Okay. A little bit of leaves. Just like this, how you can see, like this, okay? So we don't brown the basil, we don't brown the garlic, we don't burn nothing, 
but Italians doesn't like really brown garlic, okay? And uh, we hit it again, and we leave it on low, medium low, huh? So, put it down. Well, this sauce, remember, is done quite in five minutes. So here, Very big chunks, okay? And normally in a school we have some, some, someone that cleans, that's the best thing, okay, in a cooking class. Now, today I have to clean by myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> now the next step is doing the pasta. Why? The sauce is here. Remember, salt and pepper to taste. So, at the end. Okay? Never before. Why? If you reduce it a little bit too much, then after the salt can be too much. So, uh, leave it on medium-low. Let it cook for about five minutes, that's all. And then after you pour salt and pepper how you desire. Mm? And, this one away. This one away. This one. Yeah. I hope that everything is clear right now and if you have questions please you can tell the questions directly on Facebook so we can answer if you have some important question about I don't know about the products about oil about uh, everything I'm here for this reason too um, doing ravioli and doing just the cooking class is a little bit too easy so make it fun <laughs> okay and uh, so two minutes more for the sauce and now in this three four minutes we do ravioli yes in three four minutes now pasta machine nona style okay so we have this machine here we need uh, a ravioli cutter okay the ravioli cutter can be the fancy style normally or it can be just a pizza cutter, or for example, you can use as well just a knife, okay? It's up to you on what you have, that's not a problem. If you don't have the machine, we can roll it as well by hand. You need a little bit more time, don't use too much flour, use just this a little bit that you need that you don't stick it on the table, okay? But you can roll it by hand too. It's a little bit more difficult, but I can show you, okay? Now, when you buy the machine, you will get this, another attachment to cut fettuccine and spaghetti, and the clam, so we can fix it on the table. Okay, and uh, a handle. Put the handle perfectly in. And remember, we have on the machine numbers, okay, on the bottom over here, we have like the numbers from 0 to 9, so from the thickest sides to the finest sides. But in some machines, especially in somewhere in the States, for example, or in North Europa, we find the machine as well from 6 to 0. Mm? Important thing is you start from the biggest one, and we start from 0. 
So now, one minute more. Pasta. It's very soft now, okay? And uh, a small roller, <laughs> okay? And uh, we have it here. I can leave this for now over here. Okay. This one on one side, we don't need it anymore. Oil and pepper as well. And I turn off the tomato sauce. We're done, okay? We open the pasta dough. Roll it down. Roll it down. Okay. So now, Just a small knife, it's okay. And uh, before, I want to show you, but it's more difficult. I want to show you how to do it without the machine, okay? I know that not all the people have it, so, but it's a little bit more difficult. And uh, just use the all purpose flour, so. Double O. So, and we roll it. To make this one thin, it's a little bit more difficult, it's not like my, my machine. So, and it's better to do it with more pasta. More pasta is as well easier to work it, but you can take it better with a wooden roller. Sorry, but I need concentration over here. <laughs> and it's starting to be very hot. Okay. So, it's getting very nice and thin. Okay, so after this, we can just cut it with a knife or just with this roller and make it really nice, precise. Okay, and for one, two fingers of distance from each meat loaf. <laughs> okay, and two, and two, yeah, one more. So five ravioli, okay. We close it down here and turn all around with the fingers. Okay, so turn around from one side to the other side so we pop out the air. Mm? So here. Like 
Okay. This. So rolling the pasta by hand is as well more difficult while you have to be very quick. Hmm? If you are not quick, your pasta dries. You have to add more flour to roll it down and everything. And if you are not really good, after you have to use as well water to stick them together. So it's quite difficult, yes. Amazon, a pasta machine. <laughs> That's easier. <laughs> and uh, a good quality of pasta machine, for example, is Atlas. That's one of the most common pasta makers for home. Uh, more professional is Atlas 150. That means that we have as well the mechanical parts inside are not in plastic but are in steel. Huh? In stainless steel. So, I want to use the fancy one. If you don't have the fancy, you just cut it as well with a knife. Okay, you cut the end. Cut the end here. Remember one finger of distance from the stuffing. Okay, here. We cut all the end over here. Then we cut in the middle. We had two fingers. So remember one finger, 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 one finger. Here comes out like my German part. <laughs> Everything has to be very precise. And uh, if you want to make it nice with a fork, okay, just seal it much better with a fork. And this is normally how we do really tortelli, okay? Those are really the typical one, closed by fork and sealed much better by fork. Then, so let me close, close all those, like that. Close it, close it, close it, close it. Okay. And now, I'll show you how it works by machine. That's very easy. So, remember to sprinkle a little bit of flour on it so we don't stick it again on the board or on the table. And this one now, it's very easy and quick. So, we roll it down. Stay here. Ah, we roll it down and a little bit thin. Okay, so we can go on the biggest sides of the machine and roll it on zero and roll it on four on two sorry and on four so zero two four we jump number one and number three but it doesn't make sense it doesn't make the difference okay so here fold it so that we get perfectly the same sides again of the machine okay the whole shape back to zero. Now in the inverse way. So, yeah. Two. Four. And six. Okay. It was much better by hand, I 
think. <laughs> so, over here, that's the pasta machine. Very precise. Eh? And as well, lots of resistance on the pasta. And very important, I fold the dough and I roll it twice. Why? I roll it twice. Why? Mine is not by hand, it's by machine, okay? And by machine, we can give a perfect texture to the pasta. Very hard and al dente. It doesn't break. Mm -hmm. So, one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah? No, one more. Like that. And we fold it. Push down a little bit again. Now the same process. We push it back a little bit. All of the potato balls. Remember to pour your potato balls always perfectly in the middle of a strip of pasta. Not in one side, not in the other extremity, but just in the middle. It's easier to seal it. And turn around, turn around. Ooh. Mamma mia, this air bubble. Okay, one. Here. And here. Seal, 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 seal. Okay, I want it fancy. So, one finger here. One finger here, and this time, I can pour as well those ravioli in the water. So remember, you have to move a little bit of water before you put in the fresh pasta, or it will stick on the bottom of the pot, okay? So, I continue it over here, to cut perfectly the ravioli, Two fingers, cut it in the middle, two fingers, cut it in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, and in the middle. How you can see, with a pasta machine, the ravioli are standard, okay? You can see really, really, the sides, it's like all the same, okay? But I always made it by hand. So now, in this time that the ravioli cooks, for example, I pour the ones made it by hand one minute before while the pasta is a little bit thicker than the other one by machine. Okay, so I can cook it in four minutes time in the same time. Man. And uh, this one in one side here, this one away, this one away. So the last touch, we have to finish the plate and eat it. And clean cloth. Hope you enjoy, and we are here always to give you answers, okay? So, we take a nice plate, and what else? I need uh, the tomato sauce, okay? A spoon and uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Yeah, absolutely. Salt and pepper. Huh? I'll... Nice design, sorry. <laughs> and uh, we are fancy over here. <laughs> A little bit of pepper.
So we do. A little bit of tomato. So now we have time. If we stay home all the time, we have time as well to do the mise en place and everything. Okay, so. A little bit of tomatoes and a base, okay? How we see if the pasta is done? We have just something to see. We have to touch it, okay? Or, for example, so fresh pasta is very quick. Here we have only another one minute of cooking time. Now, very important, Salt in the water, yes, it is, but a tiny bit, you have only to taste it a little bit, okay? Another very important thing is oil in the water to cook the pasta. Not true, don't do that, don't do that. Chinese noodles or angel hair, I can understand, but don't do this with fresh pasta. The oil will cover directly the pasta and will be chewy. So, for my opinion, it's absolutely fake, okay? So... In my opinion is right, sorry. <laughs> One moment. Here. I need this plate. I take out the pasta. Here. Okay. And uh, I need just a tiny bit of oil so we don't stick it together. And flip it back in the sauce. So now. Last one. Five. A little bit more of this beautiful, fresh tomato sauce. Over here a little bit. And over here a little bit. And... My plate is super done. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, who wants to eat that? I, I, I ate that. Okay, nothing for you. Okay, this is mine. <laughs> if you did it, <laughs> I hope it's for you so you can enjoy it too. And here is the plate. Here's the love. Here's everything. Okay, so enjoy again and hope to see you soon in the next class. Thank you very much. Bye.